Ken, what's going on? Oh, things are going well, but it's been a long time since we talked last. And I'm changing things up. You know, I decided the other day that this handsome face of mine that still has 41,000 subscribers on YouTube needs to get back there, right? You know, so uh, the other day I went hiking and uh, did one of my David Wygant videos in the woods, you know, where I used, I went to the bamboo forest and I put my phone up against the bamboo and I kneeled down and I got all spiritual and deep and I realized, you know, I have just, have not been myself lately, you know, because I've just, there's so many where I get annoyed, you know, cause I like to watch YouTube at night, you know, and I like to, I like to look at the stock guys and stuff like that. And then I like to watch Joe Dispenza and some other things, but man, there's so many, which I'm just kind of so turned off by. And I talked about this in my last video, all these idiots with their marketing classes that they take and the $7,000 coaching programs that they sell. Right. And what does that program entail? Ken, you get, you get, a one hour call with me. And then you get, you know, an hour group call a week for six weeks. And like people are falling for that. It's ridiculous. So I decided I'm just gonna be just my asshole self again. Well, you know, there's also people out there who are buying GameStop, so. Oh, please, I bought AMC today, made money. <laughs> You know, it's like I decided today, I woke up this morning, one of my mentors last night, you know, was saying, well, he made a day maker at AMC. I'm like, all right, I don't play these stocks. I don't play these stocks. So I played AMC. I thought, you know, I took it a dollar fifty, whatever. Right. And then I was just like, because oh, you tend to get sucked in by price on it instead of just looking at the chart. Right. So I was fiddling around with another stock. And all of a sudden at the corner of my eyes, I say, that looks like a really good move for me on AMC. $19 later, it was halted. And I'm oh. like, wow. So tomorrow when I trade, I'm only doing AMC, BB, BlackBerry, and Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, I don't understand how they're doing this. I mean, oh, it's how are they manipulating it like this? It's irrational exuberance. They have just retards running around with piles of cash. Uh, well, I don't know how much money they have, but you know, they're playing margin, zero broker's fees. And they're just, uh, they're just, you know, they're, you know, what, like doggy coin went up again today because Elon said something good on it. Oh, no, the doggy, doggy coin went up again? Yeah, because, oh, because he said, he said something good about it. So they all, all the fools out there bid it up. I mean, we got, you know, I don't know, the fools and their money are soon parted. But in this case, it probably takes a couple of months. Well, uh, you know, what's nice about AMC and I was looking at the options chain. They added like strikes. It only went up to a certain strike point. And then like this, after, this morning, I was like, man, there's no strike to say this afternoon. I looked, oh yeah, they put it up to 120 now, right? But I, what I like about all these um, stocks is that what comes up will fucking come down like a ton of bricks. And the beauty is, is that the technical patterns work. So I'm just going to just trade the hell out of these things for the next couple of days because I'm going to trade them up and then I'm going to just go and, and I'm just going to buy puts and trade them down because these moves down, if we're, if we're moving up in blocks of 17 going up, we're going to move down in blocks of 17 coming down. So it's kind of crazy. And the whole crypto thing is just, yeah, I love these guys. You know, they're like, this is like 2017. Look at the 2017 chart when Bitcoin went down to this and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, they're going to drive Bitcoin. They, it's only a matter of time before they drive Bitcoin up to some stupid level. Mm -hmm. But well, there has to be some fundamentals there, you know, what like a price earnings ratio, your dividends, you know, uh, maybe it gets pays interest or it's a, yeah. So it's just, it, no, it's, it's gone to the irrational, the ir irrational, well, they're dumping all this money out there, shoveling it into the system. And, and we're in one of those insane, I don't know what you'd call it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I was listening last night and um, I was watching a guy. Ever watch this guy, John Williams? I've heard the name. Try to reach out to him. Try to get on his show. Um, you guys would resonate. Write him down. John Williams. He's interesting. He's got a big following. And he's, I listened to the meatpacking plant, you know, that got cyber attacked, right? You know, and what is it, one fifth of the meat now is, is you know, tainted or whatever, whatever it is. I mean, yeah, it's just, 
it's just and then he was talking last night he goes the next pandemic you know it's like the next pandemic i mean we gotta we, have another pandemic we have to right i mean yeah. just just a matter of do you know ken bumble tinder match and all these other all these other companies dating companies are promoting the shit out of the vaccine United Airlines is promoting it. Do you see the vaccine promotions, how they're bribing people? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what they have to do to get people to uh, get yourself a little spike protein blood clots in your brain or something. You know, step right up. <laughs> it is. It's like, step right up. I'll give you a free airline ticket if you go and you right. pop yourself with some unknown substance. Well, down in West Virginia, they're giving away guns. Yeah. They'll have a lottery for guns. Are they really? Yep. Well, whatever the people like, that's what they want to uh, get them for. I mean, it's, it's a little much. It's crazy. I mean, a client of mine was telling me today, and by the way, I need some C60 to send to my client, client who's coming. Oh, okay. Um, I'll tell you about it afterwards, right? He works, I, I can't tell you who he works for, but he works for somebody big, okay? So um, somebody who you'd want to get in with, right? But he was talking to me and he is a he's the outlier of the outliers right so in an industry that everybody has the shot he doesn't and they make him they make him like the pariah in the corner he's like, oh no there he is he doesn't have it he can't hang and sit with us it's just so bizarre out there well they, you know that people are you know it's experimental it's not proved by the fda uh, and if anybody ever studied the actual, uh, you know, the ferret studies and everything, it's going to be ugly. The next time a, a different virus comes around, you're going to get, you're going to have, who knows how many hundreds of thousands will die from uh, cytokine storms. Sorry, right. almost all the ferrets died. It, it, I tell you, Ken, it's, it's crazy because I, I look at it and I listen to it and I look at it and I'm just like, man, I just... You know, I listen to Joe Dispenza. You ever listen to Joe Dispenza? I've heard the name, yeah. Yeah, and, and Joe Dispenza is really big into your mind healing yourself, right? Like when you got macular degeneration, you said, well, C60 cured me. You know, I'm fine. You, you like protected forever and ever, right? So Joe Dispenza is really interesting. You know, what is, what is it? It's like 35% of people who take the placebo heal from yeah. whatever they're taking. And yet, imagine if we just gave out a COVID vaccine with water, right? And just told people it was a vaccine. What type of people? People would go out, feel fine. They would go do things. And they would have the same placebo effect because their mindset would be all about healing and health. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about because, you know, a couple of people, because I love the thing about YouTube compared to podcasting is that people on YouTube will actually go and, and write things down, right? You know, and everybody wanted to know a really good health regimen. So you've got two healthy people, you and I, and we're both around the same age, unfortunately. You know, I was telling somebody <laughs> today, I said, you know, I said, I said, we're like in the last, we're like at the end of the third quarter, you know, and it's yeah. like we've got the fourth quarter left. And the guy looks at me and he says, oh, that's depressing. And I said, no, not really, because I just don't give a fuck anymore. So it's okay. So let's talk health today. You know, let's talk about health regimen and what you do and what you believe, because it's all about, I truly believe that everything, every supplement we take, um, every bit of, um, and by the way, I, when I, I, um, I'm going to tell you this right now, and anybody who does C60, this is the greatest thing in the world. So I use a, a tablespoon, right? Same one every single day. And I put the tablespoon, when it's done, I put it in a, um, a cup, a mug in my uh, in the refrigerator. So you know what I have now at the bottom of that mug, right? Is a hard clump of like pure, <laughs> pure C60. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. You know, I know I can eat it, right? Uh, put it under my tongue, use it. Make some paleo coffee. I, I mean, it's still good, right? In the fridge? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, it, it's hardened. I've been it putting it in my, forever. I put it in my ears, which is really good because it gets into your bloodstream, right? Um, 
sometimes I put it on my face, some of that stuff on my face, and you could feel it like, like literally like sizzling into your face. It's a really cool feeling. So I don't want to waste a drop of it. I never want to waste a single drop of it. So let's talk about health and let's talk about regiment and let's talk about what it means to, you know, for you as a man, right? What you do on a daily basis to remain young and healthy and why, because you're very good with, with science-based and science-backed, you know, facts with this. Why you do certain, why you do the things you do and why you know that it works. Because I think people need to hear that because there's a lot of misinformation out there on a lot of things. People say, oh, I, I just want to go and start doing this, this, and that. No, 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 no. You know, you have to listen to somebody who knows what they're talking about. So Ken, share with people what your daily regimen is and why you do the things you do. Well, it's a so first principle is like, if you talk to an old vet, you know, a veterinarian and ask them about animal health, what's the number, what are the important things? Diet, diet, diet. Okay, it's the food you put into your body, the water you drink that's gonna really determine your health to the highest level. And so things to, well, obviously you try to eat organic as much as possible. Because there's just so many nasty ass pesticides and herbicides and God knows what else, the glyphosates and all that in that uh, food. I mean, sure, even the organic food is gonna have that stuff in it, but at a much lower level. So you can do the, all you can do is the best that you can do, right? So that's the first thing, try to get out of uh, all the toxic things. And then there's other things too you need to get rid of, like seed oils. Seed oils is just hideous. I mean, cotton seed oil, uh, even peanut oil, canola oil. Oh. Uh, you, you know, we've heard the whole things. So even sunflower, safflower oils. Seed oils are bad for mammals. They're great for birds, but they're bad for people because they cause inflammation. You know, they're way heavy in omega-6 and, and all the fat and a lot of the health problems that modern Americans have can be traced back to seed oils. And of course, the, the other patch, of course, is sugar. You know, the pure refined sugars. That's, uh, that's pretty damn nasty. But, and, and so that's, that's what you'd, that's, you know, that's like a principle. So basically, first thing I do is, you know, I'm, I'm going to be getting the, hitting the six zero here before too long. Hey, when's, your birth, when's, your birth, when's your birthday? July 7th. Well, I knew, yeah, I knew you and I were a week. I'm July 1st. Oh, okay. So you're six zero on July 1? On July 6th, uh, July 7th? Yep, July 7th. July 7th, okay, I'm 5'9". Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got a year, oh, you got a year, you got a year on me, man. Oh, oh no. aren't you dreading the birthday? I hate my birthday. I don't know, it's gonna come. I was kinda, I kinda dreaded the 3-0. Uh, the 6-0, it's like, oh, well, you know, there's so many of the damn things. But uh, yeah, what I do, the thing I found, the number one thing I found, like if you're doing a, a technique is intermittent fasting. Okay, so when do you, when do you do, when's your last meal of the night? Uh, usually about five or six. What I do is I, I run it to, I eat like at one or two so I can go out to lunch with people, right? So I still have like a social life. I could go out to lunch and then, you know, have an early dinner. And uh, so I'm on the four to six hour eating plan. And, you know, I'm not perfect every day. Sometimes, you know, it rains out to eight hours because of, you know, like a weekends or something or a glass of wine or whatever. It's uh, things like that happen. But, you know, I tried all different things. I'd gained a little weight over the years and I did this and that, and uh, even exercise didn't seem to do that, but intermittent fasting does. Once you get that, you know, you, you give that some time for your, first, my digestive system is hugely improved. My ability to digest food has gone up, so I'm getting more nutrients from the same food. But, uh, and, and I've eaten like the same meals, like I eat one in an eight hour or nine hour window and I'll gain weight on it. I'll eat the same meals in like the four hour window and I don't gain any weight. So it's not just what you eat, it's when you eat. And as you get older, that window shortens down. So, you know, by the time I'm in my 70s, it'll probably be one meal a day. And in your, if you're in your 30s or 40s, you know, you can have an eight hour meal window or something. It doesn't have to get and tighten up. But as you get older and the way metabolism goes, and, and also intermittent fasting doesn't destroy your metabolism, like uh, slow it down, like regular fasting does. Because when you have that, you know, eat what you want. You can enjoy your, well, don't eat what you want, eat healthy things but you can enjoy yourself there. And so you don't, your body doesn't go into like, a, oh, I'm starving mode. It says, oh, I have a lot of food now. Uh, so I'm not starving, but you know, it's just intermittent and your body adjusts. And once you get the glycogen and your liver starts burning up and it happens after 16, 17 hours, it's starting to tell your, the body, you know, it starts dumping fat. First fat it dumps from is from the liver fat and other visceral fat inside your body. Bam, that's what needs to go first. The outer stuff can take a while. So 
that's the one thing. And, and so I'll eat like breakfast or lunch or whatever you call it. And I'll try to eat, you know, organic, healthy foods, uh, not processed foods. Sometimes I, I, you know, so I go to restaurants, which probably, but I try to go to the healthy, you know, kind of organic restaurants, which we actually have out here in Boulder. So, and, uh, or I'll, I'll just cook it at home. And then usually I go home and have a, a, a dinner, usually a light dinner. And then uh, before the end of the line, and then that's it. Yeah, and yeah it's fun, you know, it's funny today I had, I usually for breakfast, I usually have four eggs. Um, I break my fast with C60. You know, so that's that's usually what I do. I, I, I'll uh, I'll wake up. I'll have some water. Um, I'll do my uh, I'll do two meditations. I'll do Wim Hof. Um, then I will usually around nine forty. I'll have like a green tea with a little bit of oat milk in it, so still under twenty calories, right? Little stevia yeah. in there, still fasting, right? And then I'll have my eggs. Um, I'll do like I'll air fry egg. I'll 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 soft boil eggs and I'll put my in my air fryer. I'll do sweet potatoes. So I get that like protein and carb, which is such a good breakfast. And then literally two hours later, I have my sardines. And then literally two hours later, I've got my coconut yogurt with cacao and goji berries and blueberries. And literally two hours later, I'm eating my dinner. Right? You know, so I'm eating it all in like that eight hour window. And the rest of the time, I'm hydrating and drinking it. But today. Today's like the opposite. Today I had I had this like really good Icelandic nut yogurt for breakfast with like berries and everything else because damp is not good in the morning for me. It, my stomach tends to not like damp in the morning. So once in a while I'll do that. And then I had my sardines and then I had, which is really good by the way, I had chick flea, chickpea flour pizza with grass fed cheese as a snack at four o'clock. Now chick flea, chickpea flour is really good for men over the age of 50. Artichokes, chickpea flour, um, um, goji berries are really good. Um, uh, what are those things? Pomegranate seeds are really great, yeah. pomegranate powder. So, and then grass-fed cheese is really also really good sometimes too for you. So I'm pretty much, I had that at four, 4.30. I'm gonna go work out after this. I honestly think I'm just gonna fast the rest of the, I mean, I'm probably gonna get hungry after the gym. But I've had three meals already, you know, oh, I've, yeah. already, I've already had three meals. So I'm going to do a longer fast. Maybe I'll have a green drink before I go to the gym, which is 40 calories. You know, you know, maybe I'll have like 40 calorie green drinks and take some, take some of my herbs, you know, which is mildly, you know, but I'll still fast for 14 or 15 hours tomorrow. Now, when do you take your C60? Are you taking it on an empty stomach in the morning? How are yeah, you doing that's generally what I take it. I usually take it in the morning and then usually I'll take something mid afternoon just because I have lots of it. So I probably take it more than, you know, is necessary, but that's okay. And the other thing is I also use supplements. That's really important. There's no way you're going to get all your nutrients. And uh, especially in the wintertime, you need that vitamin D as well, especially, you know, because if anyone's been following the, the, the crud stuff, you know, a high vitamin D level, a high zinc level, these are really important. Vitamin D with vitamin K, I have a multivitamin. Usually before I go to sleep at night, sometimes I'll have a uh, like magnesium citrate. Yeah, me too. And, I do uh, glycinate, magnesium glycinate before I go to sleep. Okay, with, like, I do the time. citrate, but uh, it's, and then the other thing I really, I also think is you got to eat, also iodine is pretty important. Unless you're eating a lot of seafood, you're not going to have enough iodine in your diet. And you can have some levels of goiter, right? You can, you don't really notice it, but, then, but you have to be careful with iodine supplements because you can overdose on those and mess up thyroid function. So that's just something to be, but if, yeah, if you're not good doing a really good multivitamin, multimineral supplement, you're just, you're not anywhere near optimization. Do you do, and I know it's controversial, but a lot of people that I follow have done, I'll do metformin cream in the morning for anti-Alzheimer's. I mean, it's just David Sinclair, who I follow and, and you know, what's his name? Uh, you know, Bulletproof Coffee Guy, you know, uh, you know, and plus my naturopath and plus somebody else that I know kind of did it. It's a cream, so it's really mild on so many ways. I didn't even notice any, any difference in my, see my issue has always been my fasting blood sugar anyway. You know, my, my long-term blood sugar is always like under five two, so it's perfect. My fasting blood sugar, Ken, is always in the nineties. You know, it's just weird. It's like it hit that level and never went back. And it's been that way for like 15 years, you know, where there's just something, in my body that just makes my fasting blood sugar, no matter what I take, no matter how much I fast, no matter what I take. And you know me, I don't eat sugar, I don't eat any of that stuff. So 
there's something that's being processed or something that's not being processed or there's something that, and, and every doctor I've gone to, they say, you know, they look at my long-term blood sugar and they're like, no, you're good, man. You're like 5.1. You're like, you know, like the, the healthy range, you know? So it's not your long range. It's like the fasting blood sugar seems to just run higher. Even with C60, it's still running. Yeah, there's a, I actually saw a, a guy talked about how to, to do some of that stuff. I can't remember where it was. Yeah, there's some weird stuff. I mean, some of that, you know, because proteins and other things can be turned into sugars. So if your body wants at that level, there's just, there's a, there's ways of doing that, but I've forgotten the, where to get that information. So it's, and, and, you know, nobody's perfect. I mean, I don't exercise as much. I kind of hurt my knee, uh, a little sporting accident here in the last fall. And uh, so I've been, I'm just starting to get back to riding bicycles. I tend to try to avoid high impact exercises. I think that just tears up your body, especially as you're older, takes longer to heal. So like uh, bicycling or swimming are way better than running because uh, you just tear yeah. yourself up that way. I still do hills. I mean, you know, I still like, uh, yeah. Well, just, just with the hills, that's okay. But it's up just, the hill, up the hill, not down. Up the hill. No, yeah, not down. I'll, yeah. I'll go and I'll, I'll go and fast walk up the hill when I'm hiking. Or oh, I, yeah, if, I, if there's steps, I'll sprint up. The, I'll, I'll run up the hill, but I will yeah, yeah. not run. I will not run as much as I want to run down the hill. I don't have the vertebrae left to go run down that hill anymore. Yeah, and I yeah I do a lot of walking too, hiking I guess you'd say. That's really I think just getting out and walking, you know, thirty minutes or an hour a day. That's that. I'm not really a hardcore workout guy. I don't really go to the gym. I never really. Well, I grew up where I grew up. There really wasn't any gym, so it's just something that I never got into. Do you know? I've been you know me. I'm a fitness junkie, so um, you know. So it's it's like I you know I work out every single day. But do you notice? And this is really interesting, you know, just to be blunt. I mean, C60, I know I noticed, and I've been doing it for 15 months, 16 months, right? Um, and I truly believe it's, I, I mean, I'm like you, I truly believe my eyes are healed, you know? And it's like, I haven't even gone back to the, I haven't even gone back to the optician yet, you know, because I have a two year window that I want to do. New year, November will be two years. Because the fact is, I think that all the damage that it took to go put that, Drusen in my eyes. I figured it will take a couple of years to undo whatever 56 years of whatever was in my body was starting to formulate, right? So I kind of said it. Plus, my eyesight is like, you know, I test my eyesight sometimes. Like, I'll go to the gym and I'll read signs that are way in the distance and I'll read the whole thing, you know, or, you know, I'll, I'll like laser or like I'll go out to the park and I'll see like, uh, I'll go look at the sun. And I'll see the bugs up in the trees, right? And I'll go pinpoint the bugs flying around the trees. So it's really good eye exercise to realize that your eyesight is always going to be as strong as you want it to be, you know? So um, I notice other things with C60. You know, I've noticed the, um, feel like I'm 17 again all night long sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, Jesus. I'm like, it, you know, it wakes me up. There's another thing too that I noticed is like, it's a, it's a cleansing. I would say it's more of a detoxifying thing because I can tell you that like when I wake up in the morning and I pee and I'm detoxified all night long, right? You know, you know it's like my piss smells worse than it's ever done. You know, it's a lot of herbs I take, but I realize that I'm detoxified. I realize that it detoxifies you in a lot of ways as well. You know, it kind of, it kind of does that, but I can tell you that middle of the night, I'm like, damn man and your dreams your dreams on it there's something that it stimulates inside my brain where my meditations are deeper i've been doing hyperbaric chamber as well right oh that's really good yeah <laughs> yeah you want to talk about regenerating stem cells right i mean my my experience in the hyperbaric chamber is unreal sometimes i feel like um i'll get so deep into healing in there that I feel like I was all of a sudden my body would go, Voop. you know, when your body goes like that, like it's been dropped because you check, I check out so deeply when I get into that, that mode, you know, that, that whole mode. So I can tell you that C60 has really changed a lot of things. I mean, a lot of stuff in my body, you can feel it working different parts of your body. Like for a while, I felt it was like concentrating on my eyes. And then for a while, I felt like it was like doing some other things, you know, like it, I almost feel like it goes to where you need it most that 
present moment. Yeah, well, your body knows what needs to be healed. So it has kind of like a priority list that runs down. And the key thing about C60, I mean, once you're, as you get older, you know, SOD, superoxide dismutase goes down. And so some of the other things like glutathione go down in production in your body. And that's just part of aging. And so C60 replaces that missing stuff. And so you get like when your mitochondria function, you get full, you got pregnenolone production back up to where it used to be when you were much younger. And then the body turns that into whatever hormones it needs. So you're not just getting, you know, like hormone replacement therapy, one hormone. You're getting, uh, you're getting, you'll get, uh, you know, you get in your pineal gland, you get melatonin, your pituitary gland, you get the human horth growth hormone and those other master hormones in the, uh, in your pituitary, you're going to get your T3 and T4 back up, you know, your adrenals. Uh, will kick, start kicking up and they get the androgens out there. <laughs> and those androgens, of course, are turned into testosterone or estrogen or progesterone, depending on who you are. And uh, yeah, that, and, th and then the other thing about C60 is as, you know, our bodies rebuild ourselves. And so once your body is in a really good low oxidative uh, environment, in fact, we've been doing some tests here. Let me grab one of these kits. Okay. I'll give them a, a... We do, it's a healthy... Healthy beings, it's a meta-oxy test kit. That's what they call it. Basically, it just tests for aldehydes in your body. And aldehydes are a measure of uh, basically oxidative damage because they shouldn't be there. So you're all, you can actually see, take it before you take C60, any C60, obviously. And then you can, you can look at your aldehyde levels. And then after about a month, you'll see they're way down. And so when your oxidative levels are way down, that means your body can rebuild itself. The endoplasmic trichin can build those proteins all those body things can be built this time correctly. Cause you know, they've, you've been here a few years old. If you hadn't been doing C60 for the long term, you got damaged proteins. You've got uh, collagen losses, you know, you get all that stuff has been, as not being built right now with C60 can actually build, build the proteins right. And then as the whole cycle of replacement goes on, it's built right again. And so you get that slow, gradual improvement as time goes on, which I've noticed. You know, I also noticed too, which is really interesting is that I don't ever want to sleep. I don't want to sleep anyway. I mean, because the fact is I'm, I'm a sponge for learning, you know, so I think sleep is like the biggest waste of time in the world. It's comfortable. I mean, you know, it's great. I, I lay on my, I lay on my uh, Dave Asprey sleep map, right? Oh. <laughs> after, I, after I pulse for an hour in my, on my head, which I know you don't like to do. But... Uh, I don't know. That's kind of scary. I don't know. Oh, I love it. It probably does things. It, I love it. It does good things. I mean, what, you know, it's, it's, sending electromagnetic frequencies to your brain so it, your brain's probably absolutely eating it up right but a lot of people don't like the way it feels i love the way it, ah, you know it goes like oh, this yeah, i'm like, I, I'm like it. I like it i mean i enjoy it but what i realize and this is something else that i've realized after taking c60 is that um i don't want to sleep i finally i go to bed around 12 30 i'm up before my alarm my alarm's 7 30 so i'm probably up around 6 45 when the birds are chirping and, you know, I'm kind of tired when I wake up, you know, but I go and I go right to meditation and I'm not tired at all ever during the day. Like once I'm up and I don't do coffee or anything, but once I'm one, you know, I do, you know, I've started just doing the green tea, but once I'm up, I'm up and I realize it's C60. It's like, I've always had a lot of energy, but I realize you could sleep a lot less. And if you're taking it, it seems to keep your energy level really what I would, the best way that I, I, I can put it, it's almost like neutral all day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, it's like, you don't have a lot of peaks and a lot of valleys. There's no crap. You know, I remember like before C60, there would be a high level of energy and then a crash, right? Now I feel like it's just all day long. I'm kind of like driving 65 miles an hour, <laughs> humming along and really just being extremely uh, well run all day. Yeah, I, that's what I noticed. It's, it's it, first thing I noticed when I was taking C60 before I, you know, came company all that is that it got rid of the afternoon blahs. You know, you get that kind of that yeah. glucose crash about two o'clock in the afternoon after you've had lunch or something. And it just, that just all went away, which is really nice. So you don't have to deal with that. And I think C60 also when you take in the morning, it has a little bit of a stimulatory effect. That's why we say people don't take it late at night because you might not go to sleep uh, if you take it too late. But in the morning, it's great. You know, some people use in the coffee, like the, you know, the paleo coffee. And that's one thing, though, with C60, you really don't need coffee in the morning to get going. It's, uh, you know, it's you get you just don't have that dragging when you get out of bed. 
no, I like it on an empty stomach. And then about 15 minutes later, I take my greens, you know, with hydrogen. So, oh. you know, yeah. So like I'm, I'm pumping that I'm pumping all up in there, but I like it to do it. I like it on that empty stomach to do what, you know, you got to have a good, that's another thing too. <clears throat> if you're taking oil on an empty stomach, you got to have, yeah. a, <laughs> you got to have a halfway decent digestive system. Otherwise. Uh, yeah. It's coming out the back end pretty quick. Oh, Otherwise, coming out the back end really, really, really fast. So yeah. uh, that's what I always tell people all the time. There's like a warning label on it. It's like, you know, work your way up to oils because oil in the morning, but oil in the morning is, look, at olive oil in the morning is actually on, on its own is good for you because it stimulates oh, yeah. different things. Well, that's why a lot of people put it like a coffee or even you can put it with a meal. If you've just taken, start taking C60, just have it with a meal. It, it'll get absorbed slower, but it'll still get absorbed. You know, with like eggs or something, right? Or some protein. Because generally it's better to have like a protein in the morning and then carbs at uh, toward the afternoon. And of course, greens and other, you know, nutrient rich dense foods, whenever. But, uh, but that's just, yeah, it's just generally, I mean, no, there's no perfect way to eat. And our ancestors didn't eat perfect. You know, they ate when they ate, they ate when they found something to eat sometimes. So, no, it, but we can do better than uh, they did. But the thing is stay away from all the nasty reprimed foods. That's, I mean, that's just so bad for you. It's, it's beyond. Even to, you know, can we try to be perfect, right? You know, we try yeah. to, you know, and we just, it's, it's, it's funny. It's like a challenge, you know, yeah. there, there's just, and it's also food combinations, but then again, the better your digestion gets, you know, like I know if my digestion's off, I can't combine anything with anything. Right. But if my digestion feels okay, I can do the coconut yogurt with fruit and cacao. And that's another thing you want to get. You want to get cacao in you every single day because of the polyphenols, right? Yeah. Yeah, the polyphenols. And the thing is- people... also, well, you could also do chocolate if, if you do like really dark, rich 80% or something, I guess that would get to, to you. <laughs> I just do the 100% cacao nibs. <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that, that's another way. 80%, you know, if you want a little bit. And, uh, but you got to be careful. Some of that stuff has a little caffeine in it. So if you take it too late in the day, it might- get you a little bit of uh, staying up, but I've been sleeping pretty good lately. So I don't, uh, I don't really have that problem. Yeah. I've been sleeping all right lately. So what are you doing? What are you doing this summer? Anything fun? Uh, well, actually I am, uh, you know, Rex bear. No names familiar though. Yeah. Rex bear, he runs, he has uh, the leak project and then he's hooked up with Penelope. Uh, I can't remember who Lewis, I think her last name is. And uh, they're doing a, starting a new thing called fast awake. Where they travel around and do little uh, little adventures, you know, kind of in the woo-woo land, but not quite. So they're doing one. One is they're coming up with their first episode is uh, they've been finding a, a lot of uh, nanotubes in, in well, the, the same guy that did the Bhatti study in, uh, in C60, the one, the Paris study. Well, he has another study now, and he, he studied like the lung tissue from 25 asthmatic kids in Paris, and they all had nanotubes in them. Oh, wow. And then even regular people have nanotubes. It looks like the, uh, the catalytic, car catalytic converters of cars are making, you know, nanotubes and spewing them out. And then they're getting into our lungs. So uh, that's a big, uh, that's a big thing. The, the, the same guy, the Bottry guy, he did the study on that. And we figured out where they're coming from. So okay. they're going to do a uh, study on that, which is an interesting thing. The air is so, the air is so toxic. You ever, you drive with your windows up? I drive my windows open some days and you know what I taste? Exhaust. Yeah, well, you're living yeah. in a big city, but yeah. uh, you know, places like LA, you're living in LA, I lived there for a while. Oh, LA was disgusting. It was like, it, it was like smoking a pack and a half of cigarettes a day is living in LA. Yeah, LA was unless, disgusting. Unless LA, you're right next to the ocean. It's yeah, pretty L nasty. LA was pretty nasty. LA, LA is, is such a, it's so funny. It's such an overpriced city. It's so toxic there on so many levels. But yet people go because of the sunshine, you know, and they yeah. really looked at like what <laughs> you're living in a toxic hell. Playa del Rey, not Playa, Playa del, del Rey and Playa Vista are full of methane gas. You know, there's signs in building where they have methane gas being eliminated oh, yeah. out. Right. Because I lived in Playa Vista for two years and it's all built on just tons of methane gas. gas so they have all those old oil wells. Yeah, I mean, there's a big oil or LA basin is an oil basin. They used to just have wells everywhere. 
And I'm sure they, they, you know, they punched all the holes. It's all just seeping up. The well might be gone, but it's, you know, at least you can't see it on the surface, but it's still leaking up through. I mean, the La Brea tar pits, I mean, that's, that's, that's been bubbling up there in the basin for, for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah George, I didn't like LA very much. It was just too much, too much of everything. George is so much nicer. I mean, it really is. I um, sent my air conditioning's out in my car, and, and the guy that's supposed to fix it is, is always out, right? Mm. And that's where I'm starting to smell like, you know, you get on the highway here, and there's just, you know, L uh, Atlanta's a hub. So you get on the highway, and it's just big truck central. I oh, mean, yeah. Well, yeah, so running up and down the coastal highway there. Right, 285. 285 it, it is, yeah. it's just, you know, all the trucks are just going, you know, they're just going straight through the country. And it, it's just the air is just so bad on the free on the highway. It, it's just, you don't realize. And that's another thing, too. It's like, you just don't realize. And, and I tell people this all the time, the toxicity that we go through on a daily basis, and we were afraid of COVID. Yeah, it, it's like, day-to-day <laughs> -day life is more dangerous than COVID will ever be. Oh, yeah. And then also the water. I'm, I'm pretty good because I get the water off the front range here in Colorado. But I mean, a lot of the cities in the United States, they're just pulling out of the river. And, you know, they run it through their sewer system, then it's back into the river for the oh, people right. downstream. And, and they can't process all those, those drugs, you know, hormone, drugs, birth control, heart medicines, all that stuff. That just goes right through out into, I mean, down below the the, you know, the, the sewage outlet, a lot of these rivers, you know, the, they have hermaphrodite fish. Right? They don't know what sex they are because they've been getting birth control in the water supply coming out of there. And so it's, you know, and then that, then there's somebody downstream pumps it in and, and puts it in the faucet and gives it to you. I mean, you get to, it's really important from where do you get your water that you're just not drinking, you know, somebody else's waste. I use AccuPure. You ever hear them? Mm, is it a, is it a, a filtration, filtration system? system? Yeah. You know, I got so a Berkey. Yeah, uh, you know, it was 400 bucks. It's AccuPure. It's got triple filtration. Okay, yeah. I go, yeah, I go, I fill, I fill it up and it runs through the filtration system yeah. and I drink the water because the water in Atlanta, it's disgusting. I mean, yeah, I could, yeah, yeah, a lot of cities like that. Yeah, and also you need to get the fluoride out. You know, the US government decided after Operation Paperclip, it was going to use the same amount of fluoride that the Nazis and the Soviets used in their prisoner of war camps on the American population. Isn't that interesting? So, uh, you know, yeah, it keeps people passive and ignorant. Do you have a good shower filter that you use? I don't know what I call it. I don't know. I don't even know if it takes out the uh, fluoride, though. I don't think it takes it out yet, because I know like the, the water here smells like chlor. It's just heavily chlorinated. The water. Well, that's because there's probably all kinds of bacteria that you know they want to protect it. Yeah, I never really found a good shower filter that doesn't. Uh, uh, I mean, the other place I was pulling well water off, and that was pretty nice. Water I got now is pretty good, but they still, you know, they still got chlorine in it. It's I don't amazing. even know why they put fluoride in the water still. That's just so, you know, come on. It's just retarded. Why did you put, you know, the Nazis and the Soviets did it for their prisoners of war. What are we, prisoners of war of uh, who? You know, the U.S. <laughs> government? Come on, take the fluoride out of our water. We <laughs> retards. It's crazy. It's crazy. The, the, just the amount of toxins that are in the water. It's, yeah. it's amazing how really disgusting everything truly is. And that, that's what's so funny. It's like people will go and they'll eat poison all day. They'll shower in poison. They'll drink poisonous water. But they fucking wear a cloth mask over their face because they mm -hmm. think it's going to save them. But in reality, it's like they're already being eaten alive by all the bad stuff and all the bad choices that, 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 they're, that they're doing. And that's where it's so, that's where I think it's just so hypocritical you know, like everything. And, and it's funny, all the signs that are up here, you know, because it's so, it's not liberal shithole here, you know, mm -hmm. so I was in Alabama two weeks ago and outside of Starbucks, you know, if you're not vaccinated, you can come in without a mask. So I went like this and I pinched my arm and then I walked in. I was like, yeah, I just vaccinated myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just something. And another people don't realize there's a lot of people's weight gain and their persistent weight is due to toxins. You know, oh, their, God, liver, yeah. their liver is so overwhelmed with toxins, it can't process them. And of course, part of that is you can't process, you know, your hormones need to be processed out of your body. They're good, they're released. And then after a certain amount of time, your liver is supposed to take them out of the bloodstream and new ones come in, right? But if you can't do that, you'll get like estrogen dominance, you, but damaged estrogen dominance because these 
hormones go bad. I mean, that's like, that's what LDL cholesterol does. You know, normally LDL cholesterol level is turned into pregnenolone in your mitochondria and then off to the hormones, right? As you get older, it doesn't happen. And then it hangs around in your bloodstream, not being filtered out. And then it oxidizes and sticks to your arteries. And that's where, you know, you get your plaques. So that stuff needs to get out. And if, you, if you've got so many toxins in your body, which is very common today for people, the only way the body can do it is stored in the fat cells. And so literally it, it's got to actually, it, it actually creates a situation where you just get fatter and fatter and fatter. And you say, why can't I lose this weight? Well, it's because that's where your body's storing the toxins. And it's, and it's got no choice because it, it's got no choice, right? It's got to get the toxins out of the blood. So it sticks them into the, the fat cells, of okay. course. And, and, and so that's why, you know, the number one thing like, is reduce the toxins in your life. You can't get rid of them hundred percent, but you know, you can start with like organic foods, non-processed foods, uh, in, you know, intermittent fasting, uh, it, it just, just any of that stuff. They found that eating organic fruits and vegetables will dump uh, the pesticide herbicide burden in people by 90% in two weeks, just two weeks, right? So you can do that. Try it for a month or two, and then, you know, it's down 98%. You know, you still got stuff in there, but, you know, and don't, don't use those bug sprays in your freaking house. Do not do that. Those philanthropes and all the other nasties and, you know, raid and stuff. If it kills insects, it's going to damage you too. Uh, so don't, you know, watch, watch what you're doing. Try to get all the toxins out of your house that you can. Yeah. That's, I got, that's I got, the number got, one thing too. I got roaches and, you know, cause it's Georgia, right? So the, the guy came and sprayed and I'm just like, oh. man, I do not want anybody spraying this shit in here, but I also don't want the roaches. Yeah. So you gotta, I mean, you always gotta leave for a day. I know. Some of that stuff dissipate. I know. You do have to leave. You, you have to dissipate. And thing is, I mean, like I got, I got sprayed to kill the roaches, but that's not as fun as hunting them down with my flip flop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I can go like anybody can go spray them, right? But yep. to like go nail them and listen to them explode, there's like a satisfaction, you know, because they're so big. So you hit the flip flop and you just go swack and it goes and you can see it and it like literally splatters like everywhere. And I posted that on um, this is so funny. So I posted that on Facebook. And of course, who made a comment on it? Some fucking liberal woman who lives in California, right? Oh. It's a living thing. Oh, yeah. just, it's a living thing. You should save it and put oh, hey. it outside. And I'm thinking like, you know what? Cockroaches are, you're going to get diarrhea if they get on your food, okay? Anything a cockroach touches and, and, and you touch it and put it in your mouth, you're going to get diarrhea, okay? You're going to get sick, right? You're going to get salmonella and it's a cockroach, yeah. okay? And she's just like, ladybugs? Like I have a ladybug in the house. I take the ladybug and I put it in my hand and I make it go fly away because I really like the ladybug. But it just, it had to be a liberal California woman, right? Oh, save everybody. Oh, but just, just save them, save them and send her a whole package of them. <laughs> That's they, right. They can go live in your house. Yeah, you just bring them over to your house. You can just let them outside your house. It's not like they're not gonna come back in. Give me a break. It's just like retarded. It's so bad. People are just, you know, yeah, oh, they got to live. Well, yeah, but they can live somewhere else, right? Yeah, and you know what? You know, let it live, you know, and then, and then you know, maybe hopefully that was a female and it just shot out like 10,000 eggs in my house, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just so, you know, it's just so weird. People are just so, their priorities are really wrong. And, and it, it's just such a weird thing. It's like, let's save every living being, okay? Let's save this and let's save the planet. And let's say this, it's like the planet, the planet's a fucking mess, you know, it's, yeah. it's, and, and people like this, they don't want to even look at like the reality of things, man, we're living. Yeah, well, that's because they live in a fake city. They live in the artificial mm -hmm. world of the city. Now you go outside the city where people got, you know, live in nature, they got a farm or ranch or, you know, fish or whatever, just live out there in nature. They have a totally different attitude to the world because they're living in the real world. They're not, you know, they got raccoons and snakes and, you know, bears and everything else uh, that is out there. It's not, you know, you can't, it isn't a soft, fuzzy, you know, apartment in some skyscraper somewhere where you can live fantasy lives about, you know, nature, and, but not have to actually deal with it. I know, you know, it's funny. And I can tell you why she was pissed off anyway, because years and years and years ago, I met her on Bumble and cool. um, she invited me over to her house you know, invited me over to her house for a drink, right? You know, a drink, right? You know, I love that. That's yeah. what women, you know, women just can't be blunt about it. Why can't you just, hey, you want to have sex? Just invite me over for sex, right? 
and I just wasn't attracted to her. So I was, oh, well, well, I was yeah. just like, yeah, you know, I just got a pass, right? So mm -hmm. in that whole comment on Facebook, on Facebook, she goes, you know, I just don't really like any of the things that you post, anything else. I think you're a bit of an ass. And I'm thinking well, like, God, <laughs> I, what was that, 10 years ago? I didn't, I didn't, I yeah. didn't. Well, she you takes invited me over. Doesn't, doesn't take losing well. No, she doesn't take losing well. You gotta take losing well, you know, in life. You can't be so soft skinned. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes the problems you get something that you wanted <laughs> didn't turn out to be at all what you thought it would be. Yes. Anyway, I've no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Well, Ken, yeah. always a pleasure, man. You and I could talk forever. So um c60purplepower.com. I'll put a link in the YouTube. There's a Ygant 10 discount code in it. I'll put the link underneath the video because I know how to do that on YouTube and it's a lot easier for me to do that on YouTube, but it, it's probably one of the best things I've ever taken. And I've taken a lot of stuff in my life. I mean, I probably, I probably pee out a thousand dollars a month in, in vitamins into the toilet every <laughs> single day. And I can tell you, this is probably the one thing that I, if someone told me that I had to be on a desert Island for a year and I can only take one supplement with me. I would take C60, you know, I wouldn't take vitamin C. I wouldn't take any of that because I can find my own vitamin C and I can find my own vitamins, but I would take C60 because I know it'd give me a fighting chance with all the toxins I'm about to take into my body when I go and eat lizards and, 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 <laughs> and, and other weird berries that I'm not supposed to digest. So uh, Ken, always a pleasure, man. Let's start doing this more regularly. Um, if any of you down below, because now this is back on YouTube, and like I told you in the other video, I'm back on YouTube right now, and I like to build back up the audience again, and I appreciate all the listening. So if you have any questions for Ken the next time, post the questions down below, and Ken and I will get in on, and we'll talk about it. If you'd like to join in, you know, uh, we can do this live. We can do this on YouTube live next time, and we can do a Q&A. So if that idea resonates with all of you, let me know, because... I'd like to build back the awareness again. Like I told you in my last video, I'll be talking about health and I'll be talking about wealth and I'll be talking about mindset, you know, because those are the three things in life that you only really have health, wealth, and mindset. I think everybody should make lots of money, be super healthy, and really have a really good mindset and not deal with the programming from your parents. So, Ken, any final thing you want to tell people? Uh, I don't know, get out and have a life, get some sunshine, you know, go do the things that you like to do. It's just, it's time, you know, escape the lockout, lockdown. Yeah, fuck the lockdown. I'm over the lockdown. C60purplepower.com forward slash why can't Ken hang out. I'll say goodbye to you properly. Everybody else, chill out, man. I will be back at least three to four videos per week as promised. Okay. And uh, I've got a new microphone that I have now, unfortunately, I don't have a USB connection, but at least I bought the microphone. So that's a start, right? Um, I will see y'all soon. Can hang out.